this Fed is overly data dependent and has turned into a play-by-play -play commentator. And that's not the role of the Fed. The Fed should be strategic. The Fed should provide a strategic anchor, a stabilizer. So the mistake that they may make is that they'll end up this time being too tight. And I think the comments we heard yesterday that understandably um, roiled the markets, right, are an example of overreacting to data. You should have a strategic view of this economy. But, but, but hang on a second. When I speak to Richard Kuh, again, someone that you and I speak to a lot here, uh, and, and a brilliant, brilliant mind, he says this is so much more difficult for Powell than, than it was for Volcker, his hero, because of this stunning 1,700 times more excess reserves, $3.2 trillion. So whether you move interest rates by 25 or 50 basis points, it's not going to touch the sides of that, is it? No, he's right. Look, we have to deal with the legacy of way too many years of abundant liquidity injections. Reserves, bank reserves are an example of that, but we have many other examples. And the problem that a lot of people have is they focus on the flow and they forget about the stock. Yeah. But we've entered this with a massive stock of liquidity. Um, you're going to have Yan coming on later on. He's going to tell you financial conditions are really loose. And that's because of what has happened beforehand. No, this is a really difficult environment. So they can't cut rates if financial conditions are so loose, man. So this is where you have to also look forward. Yeah. And it comes back to a question that no one wants to discuss openly in central banks, but believe me, they're discussing it behind closed door. Is 2% the right target for inflation? And the way you discuss it politely is you don't say, let's change the inflation target. You'll say, let's get to 2% somewhere in the future. Yeah. Let's not rush let's there. Let's have a trajectory. Let's have a trajectory. Let's have a rolling. Let's promise 2%. Yeah. But you know what? It may well prove that the economy is stable nearer to 3%. I don't think that's going to de-anchor inflation expectations. But just, just one more comment on, on those coup comments about these excess reserves. They're not going to get that down anytime soon in a meaningful fashion, are they? Hence, broadly speaking, there's going to be excess reserves in the banking system for, for, for the foreseeable future. But the key issue, Steve, is their utilisation. Right. If they just stay yes. in the banking system, then they're not going to be an issue. It's their utilisation. So the Federal Reserve has to move this year in order to avert a crisis in the future. What would that crisis be? So the worst thing the Fed could do is to, over, to remain too tight for too long at this point. If you lose the U.S. growth engine, yeah. you've got no other growth engine there's in this no global China economy. There's no China growth There's no Europe growth so engine. China's not going to grow at 5% this year. No, I suspect it'll be closer to 4 Yeah. And, and for good reasons. They understand that opting for short-term stimulus will undermine the reforms they need. The basic issue, Steve, you should be asking this to everybody, is the evolution to the new growth models. Mm -hmm. We need new growth models. The US is evolving quickly. China understands it needs to evolve. Europe is still coming up to speed on that issue.